Ontario. Is this the Ontario we want? Are we willing to change Ontario? I mean, Ontario today, it's just so amazing. These are just some of the cities that are organizing. Barrie, Brampton, Hamilton, Kingston. Today, we start a fight to demand a living wage, to demand fair working conditions, not just for students, but for precarious workers all over this province. Wealth, Kitchener, Waterloo, London, Mississauga, Niagara, North Bay, Oshawa. I was given in consistent hours and not paid for six days. It is very disappointing. This is a struggle that everyone is coming together with and saying no matter where we work, we deserve a $15 minimum wage. We deserve paid sick days. We deserve fair scheduling, decent hours, respect on the job, a union. We have a very unique opportunity right now because as a result of workers fighting around the issue of minimum wage, we've brought so much pressure to bear on the provincial government that they have made a commitment to review all the labor laws. The Employment Standards Act sets minimum standards for workers and the Labor Relations Act uh, governs how workers form unions and how employers interact with unions. Now they're saying they want to look at employment standards and not the minimum wage. Uh, what we're saying in the labor movement, in poverty community, social justice organizations, is you can't have one without the other. Well, there's a conscious strategy by the government and employers in Ontario and across North America, which is to drive down wages. And so what that has resulted in is the fragmentation of good jobs into more and more part-time, contract, contingent, casual, what we call precarious work. And that's been very helpful to employers. I'm texting the word fairness to this number. Pull out your phone. Pull out your phone now. I think it's fair to say that you know, 40 years of neoliberalism has driven home a message that really undermines workers' confidence to have expectations. For far too often, students and young workers in this province have been told that we are entitled, that we are lazy, that we do not want to do the work, that we are not doing the work, and we are here to say that we are no longer here to take that book. They fired it. Yes, all of us, most of us, they fired it. You know why? You know the reason? Because our wage was between 14 and 15. And they hired, they hired 11 to 25 workers without no benefit, with, with no sick days. It's shame, shame, shame. The machinists and the uh, Toronto Workers Airport Council, which is this uh, alliance between all the unions are organizing the rally today outside the GTAA to send a strong message that no more contract flipping and they cannot allow these kinds of conditions to continue anymore. What do we want? $50. What do we want? see all kinds of um, uh, employers that are trying to get around the rules by misclassifying their employees as independent contractors. It's not just the airport at, at Pearson, it's the airport in Vancouver, in Ottawa, like across the, across the country and then all across the United States. Once that happens, the employer is not obligated to pay Canada Pension, they're not obligated to pay EI, they're not obligated to pay workers' compensation, WSIB, and so those workers lose their entitlements. The government has to stop flipping the contract. They're trying to undercut uh, other competitors that are offering those same services. Contracts are put out to tender and it's a lower and lower and lower bid. Well, those bids are lowered on the backs of the working conditions of the workers and the wages and benefits that they receive. You hire another company called uh, BC. They hire new people with lower wage.
talk to the people. No, we are talking about the we are talking about the The question is, do you know what they did? And what we need is a bill of rights for all our members that work at the airport. And there's 40,000 of them working at Toronto alone. How many of you here have two jobs? No benefits. Shame, absolutely. But then the workers at SeaTac in in Seattle or near Seattle, they've won fifteen dollars an hour. Yes. So it can totally happen here. We need a bill of rights for our members, and they should include things such as minimum fifteen dollars an hour. The other part of this is that along with the campaign for fair labor standards is a campaign against other aspects of the austerity agenda. So the privatization of public services, the, again the elimination of good jobs, but also the quality of the services our communities need. So I think that a successful fight around 15 and fairness will translate into a fight back on a whole range of issues that directly affect working people and our quality of lives, the health of our communities as well.